Well, hello, Internet. I've received some questions about how to set up a Flutter development system on Mac OS, so I thought I would walk you through completely all of the steps needed to have it all set up properly. And what I did here is I completely downgraded my computer to best simulate any problem you could possibly have when trying to set up this in development environment. So what am I going to cover? I'm going to show you how to install Dart and Flutter. I'm going to show you how to solve Flutter doctor settings. I'm going to show you how to install Android Studio, all of the different setups that you're going to have to do in regards to the SDK manager and tools. I'm going to cover what needs to be done to get the Z shell settings to be set up properly, how to install CocoaPods, and then I'm going to demonstrate how to run a sample app in both browsers as well as emulators. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so just so you know, if you just want to play around with Dart, you can just go to dartpad.dev and you'll be able to play around with Dart that way. So I just wanted to let you know that if you didn't know that already. Okay, so it's Mac OS, so of course, you're gonna have to go into the App Store and download Xcode. Pretty straightforward, so just click on Install and everything's going to install, no problem there. Up next, you're going to also need to install the command line tools. So you just click on your little magnifying glass up here, type in terminal, go to the terminal, and then type in xcode-select, space, two dashes, and an install. And everything will install there quite straightforwardly as well. Now is when we start to get into more complicated things. Now, I don't recommend actually going to the Flutter website and installing this way. You could, however... If you want to go that way, just I'm going to show you my recommended way. I'm just going to also show you what you would do if you chose to do it this way. So you would just go to flutter.dev and you want to go and to the get, it, get started part of the site. And then you would come down here, just click on Flutter Mac OS Stable Zip. You're going to download that. You could throw it into your user directory after you go and unzip it, of course. And then you can go inside of your terminal and again, just click on the little magnifying lens, type in terminal and you could type export path equal to path and wherever the location of that Flutter folder is with bin. You could then type in Flutter Doctor and you're going to see that you have a whole bunch of problems, which I will show you how to work through. And here are some of the problems and I'm going to walk through exactly how to get all these solved. So no problem there. What I instead recommend for installing Flutter, if you want very few problems, is to use the homebrew method. So you're just going to go to brew.sh, and you're going to come down here, and you're going to copy this line. Then you're going to jump into your terminal, paste that line in. This is if you don't have homebrew already installed, and hit enter. It's going to install homebrew. Then what you can do is just type in brew install space two dashes cask flutter. And if you do that, everything's going to install and everything's going to be much easier as the tutorial continues. So there's two different ways of working with it in the path and all that stuff. Or you can just use Homebrew, which is what I do and what I recommend. That brings us to Android Studio. So I'm going to set up this development environment with Android Studio. So just go to developer.android.com and Studio. And you're going to click on Download Android Studio. And then you're going to get it a agreement you have to sign. Of course, put a check here, download Android Studio for Mac, which is down here. And then after it goes and downloads, you're just going to click on open. Then you have to go and grab Android Studio, drag it into your applications folder. And whenever you open your, your applications folder, you're going to see Android Studio right here. Now, if you double click on it, if you had a previous version of Android Studio inside of here, you may see this right here. If you do, just check it right there and click on OK. We're going to upgrade everything. And then Android Studio finally opens up for you. What we're going to want to do now is set up the SDK Manager. So just come down here to Configure and click on SDK Manager. Whenever you do, this is what you're going to see. You can come in here and choose the chosen SDK. I'm just going to use Android 11 right here. And you can see SDK Platforms is selected. And then you're going to come down here. And I'm going to show you some other different things we need to install later. And then just click on OK. Whenever you do, this is going to pop up. Just click on OK again. And then it's going to install everything. And this can take a while. So just be prepared to wait. And there you go. It is completely finished installing. And you're going to click on Finish. All right. Now some SDK tools. 
Now, in this situation, I'm just going to install the SDK command line tools. We need more of these other options, but I want to show you another way to access and be able to install SDK tools later on in this tutorial. So for now, we're just going to go put a check where it says SDK command line tools and click on OK. This is going to pop up, click on OK again, and then it's going to install and you click finish. OK, so now what you want to do is you want to come in here and select your Android SDK location and copy it. You're then going to go into your terminal again and you're going to change directory to your home directory. This is a shortcut to be able to do that. You're then going to type in nano and this is the config file for the Z shell, which is the most up to date shell used inside of Mac OS. So hit enter. And then whenever you do, you're going to type in export Android underscore home equal. And then you're going to paste in your Android SDK location inside of here. Then as it says down here, you're going to go control and X. It's going to say save modified buffer. You want to put a Y inside of here. It's then going to say, do you want to write this file and just hit enter. Then you can go and test that that has actually worked by restarting your terminal. So you want to exit out of your terminal, restart the terminal, and then you're going to type in echo Android home. And if you see your SDK folder pop up, you know that you did everything properly there. All right. So now we're going to go in and accept the Android licenses. So inside the terminal, just type in flutter doctor dash dash Android licenses and all this is going to pop up on your screen. You're then going to have to go through and accept all of these licenses. Just so you're just going to type in Y. You're going to type in Y again. You're going to type in Y again and again and again and again and again and multiple times. And eventually you're going to agree to all the licenses. All right. Whenever you do, it's just going to say all SDK package licenses accepted. At this point, we can run Flutter Doctor inside the terminal and see what else is broken. Well, we see that Flutter set up. We see that Android set up Chrome, Android Studio. This down here is an error just because I don't have any iPhones connected to my computer. So just disregard that. But we see CocoaPods not installed. So how do we solve that problem? Again, we're going to use Homebrew. So just type in brew install CocoaPods. If you can't see that, there it is and hit enter and it will install everything for you. And you want to then run Flutter Doctor once again. And you can see I have a check mark in all of these boxes except for this one. And that's just because my phone's not connected. No issues found. Yay! We're still not done. You're going to open up Android Studio again. And I said I'm going to show you another way to be able to access your SDK tools and install things. You just go into Android Studio and Preferences. And also, well, I forgot, we're going to have to install our plugins for Flutter. So we're going to go in here and we're going to go and select plugins and Flutter. And if you install the Flutter plugin, it's automatically going to install the Dart plugin as well. As well. So just click on install and it's going to say, yes, you want this, accept, install required plugins, click on install. And there you go. And it says restart your IDE. You're going to have to restart Android Studio just by clicking restart IDE. And whenever you do, you're going to see this. All right, now it's time to go in and create a test application. So we're going to go create new project and just select anything. Just select empty activity. Doesn't matter. Click on next. And this is going to pop up. Don't worry about anything. Just click on next because we're going to get rid of this. We're going to overwrite it. Okay, so now after this is started, we're going to come up here and go file new and new Flutter project. We are, however, going to need the location of Flutter. So if you just type in Flutter, Doctor, dash v like this you're going to see in my situation i have user local cask room flutter i'm going to select all of this and copy it jump back over into android studio and where it has our new project we have to paste in our flutter sdk path we're gonna to have to do this again later on but you can see just paste that inside of there and then come down here and click on next and this is going to pop in you can name it whatever you want your project. I just called mine test app because that's what it is. If you want to develop for Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS, whatever, I just put a check in Android, iOS, and web. Just start off here. And I didn't change anything else except the organization I put in my website. And I'm going to click on finish. And here is our sample app that we will be able to use to test if our installation worked properly. All right. So right off the bat, we can check if it works inside of a browser. So just come up here and go and select Chrome and just click on it. And it might take a second here for everything to start launching and loading. And then boom, 
your browser is going to open up and this is what the sample app looks like and it's very very simple all you do is come down here and click on the little plus and it goes in increments okay doesn't matter what the app does you just know that you can now develop flutter apps for a browser all right now let's move on so now what we're going to do for some reason you have to also paste in your sdk location remember flutter doctor dash v if you want to get that so you're going to have to go file project structure see as you can see no sdk but no problem just click here and just go down to android api 29 da, 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 that's fine and click on that and select it okay so now what i'm going to do is show you how to install some other tools you need you can also come into android studio and preferences and you're going to go appearances and system settings and android sdk there's your sdk and we're going to need some other things obviously we're going to need an emulator so you just want to make sure you have checks in all of these boxes right here. And then you're going to come down here and click on OK. Guess what? A whole bunch of things are going to install. You are just going to sit here and wait for it. And whenever it's done, you're going to click on Finish. Now, whenever you do have this all set up, our Android emulator is going to be using hardware acceleration. It's going to ask you how much RAM you want to devote to it. You can devote as much as you want four gigabytes normally enough and then you're going to click on next and then it's going to install and it'll take a while and then you can see here is everything and you can see that the intel hardware acceleration has been installed and you're going to click on finish and there you can see it is done all right so now it's time to go and test out your emulator so again you're going to come up here and you can just use the automatic um, emulators that have already been created so i'm just going to use pixel 3 and you just click on that and you're going to wait for a while for this emulator to first start running it can take a couple minutes depends on speed of your computer and whenever you do you're going to see that it automatically is going to run your application inside of the emulator and of course if you come down here and click on this button a couple times it's going to continue to increment and of course you can come up here and also run your application after you make any changes and so forth and so on so there you go Hopefully now you completely understand how to install and set up a Flutter development system on macOS. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.